let us be joyful before God. Let us be jubilant this day. We will sing praises to God's holy name. Let us lift up a song to the one who rides upon the clouds. For God also protects orphans and widows and gives the desolate a home. Sing to God, O nations of the earth. We will sing praises to the Lord our God. And now we will have a reading from one of my favorite children's books entitled God's Dream, written by Archbishop Desmond Tutu and Douglas Carlton Abrams. Dear child of God, what do you dream about in your loveliest of dreams? Do you dream about flying high or rainbows reaching across the sky? Do you dream about being free to do what your heart desires? Or about being treated like a full person, no matter how young you might be? Do you know what God dreams about? If you close your eyes and look with your heart, I am sure, dear child, that you will find out. God dreams about people sharing. God dreams about people caring. God dreams that we reach out and hold one another's hands and play one another's games and laugh with one another's hearts. But God does not force us to be friends or to love one another. Dear child of God, it does happen that we get angry and hurt one another. Soon we start to feel sad and so very alone. Sometimes we cry and God cries with us. But when we say we're sorry and forgive one another, we wipe away our tears and God's tears too. Each of us carries a piece of God's heart within us. And when we love one another, the pieces of God's heart are made whole. God dreams that every one of us will see that we are, bro- we are all brothers and sisters. Yes, Even you and me, even if we we have different mommies and daddies or live in different faraway lands. Even if we speak different languages or have different ways of talking to God. Even if we have different eyes or different skin. Even if you are taller and I am smaller. Even if your nose is little and mine is large. Dear child of God, Do you know how to make God's dream come true? It's really quite easy. As easy as sharing, loving, caring. As easy as holding, playing, laughing. As easy as knowing we are family. Because all are God's children. Will you help God's dream come true? Let me tell you a secret. God smiles like a rainbow when you do. And now we say together, In the days to come, the mountain of the house of the Lord shall tower as the highest of mountains and be raised above the hills. There shall all the nations flow. Many people shall come and say, Let us go up to the house of the Lord to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, that we may walk in his paths. For the law shall go out from Zion, from Jerusalem, the word of the Lord. And he shall judge between the nations and decide for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, their spears into pruning knives. Nation shall not lift sword against nation, They shall never train for war again. O people of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Now the collect for the seventh Sunday of Easter. O God of glory, your son, Jesus Christ, ascended to glory at your side. Bring us together in Christ so that all may be drawn into your bountiful dwelling, where with Christ and the Spirit, 
You live united in love and joy. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of John. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them. And they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. For the word of the Lord. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, over the last few weeks, we have been living in the upper room with Jesus and his disciples. And as we talked last week, Jesus, through what is called the farewell discourse that runs from chapter 13 in John through the end of chapter 17, is talking and instructing his disciples And he has his group of followers, his closest friends who are about to lose him. They are about to witness his arrest, his execution, and they are going to be heartbroken. Jesus is talking to them, but John, in writing this gospel, is talking to the church at the end of the first century and the beginning of the second century. A church who have witnessed the destruction of Jerusalem, a church that has witnessed violence and death and humiliation beyond imagination. And and so to these two groups of people, Jesus is speaking words of love. He washed the disciples' feet. He gave them the commandment to love one another. Then he said to them, listen, I am the way, I am the truth, I, I am the life. The road to the Father, the road to abundant life, the road to peace runs through me. And he went on to say to them, listen, even though I'm going to the Father, even though I'm going to die, I'm not going to leave you orphaned. You're not going to be alone in this. You're not going to be on your own because God is going to send you another paraclete, another advocate who is going to be for you and do for you all that I have been for you and done for you. And and those were really powerful words spoken to both of those groups of people. And they were important words, I think, for us to hear as well. Well, today we move from talk about love and him trying to give them comfort to his private prayer. And I would submit to you that this private prayer is for the friends of Jesus and for the first and early second century Christians. And I believe that we need to pay attention to those words, not just in what we heard today, but throughout all of chapter 17, because once again, uh, once again, our lectionary stops in the wrong place. Because again and again and again, in chapter 17, Jesus says, Holy Father, pray that they may be one. 
Holy Father, make them all one. Holy Father, make them totally one. Holy Father, make them one in heart and in mind. Again and again, he says that, and that's incredibly important to both those groups of people because their unity, their oneness, their being joined together to one another and, and to God and to Jesus was essential if they were gonna do the work that was being passed on to them. And it was essential if they were going to survive. May they be one. May they be all one. May they be totally one in heart and in mind. And, and folks, I, I got to believe that for you and, and for me and for our world right now, those words, they are incredibly important incredibly important. We are living, you don't need me to tell you this, at a time when poverty and climate change and pandemic are coming together to change the landscape of the world. We have got the trifecta of horrors staring us in the faith and, and we do not know what to do with it. We do not know what to do with it. There was, there was an article that was written just very, very recently by Oxfam. And the article is called Dignity, Not Destitute. And it makes this statement. In a world where the richest, wealthiest 1% of the population has more than twice the wealth of the poorest 4.6 billion people on earth. The possibility for most of the people on our planet to acquire the resources necessary to rebound, to recover from COVID is limited and in most cases, non-existent. That report goes on to forecast that more than half a billion people are going to be driven into abject poverty by the time this pandemic has run its course. And the combination of pandemic and climate change, they are bringing us to the brink. Make no mistake about it. Governments, economic systems, corporations that put profits ahead of human lives and the survival of our planet, they are fueling our current situation. They are fueling it. Jesus said, may they be one. May they all be one. May they be totally one. Right now, all eyes, all eyes are fixed on COVID-19. And that makes sense. But right now, more viruses and deadly bacteria are being released into our world by the melting of the polar ice caps. Right now, 90% of the children on earth are breathing toxic air, toxic air that is destroying their lungs with every breath. Right now, millions of men and women and children do not have access to clean water to drink. Right now, our oceans are being turned into toxic waste dumps. Right now, 50% of the species of animals and birds on this planet have become extinct. Our earth is sick. Our planet is sick and needs to be healed. Humanity is sick and needs to be healed. There's a story about a ship that struck an iceberg and as it was sinking, they launched a lifeboat, a long, long lifeboat. And, and it was filled 
with people. And this boat was, was so long that the people at the front of the boat had no contact with the people at, at the back of the boat. And in fact, the longer they were on the darn thing, they, they began to refer to one another as the front people and, and the back people. And to make matters worse, the people who sat in the front began to hoard their supplies of food and water, not caring about the suffering and the hunger and the thirst of the people who were in the back of the boat. Well, one day, a voice shouted out, there's water coming in. We need help bailing. Well, one of the fellows at the front of the boat turned to the person beside him and said, where is the leak? The fellow beside him said, it's in the back of the boat. And he said, oh, thank God, for a moment, I thought we were in trouble. Martin Luther King Jr. said, we are caught we are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality tied in a single garment of destiny. What affects one directly affects all indirectly. And Dr. King went on to say, we must learn to live together as brothers and sisters or we will all perish together as fools. Jesus said, Holy Father, may they be one. Holy Father, may they all be one. Holy Father, may they be totally one. Holy Father, may they be one in heart and mind. We, we have, for those of you watching who are Anglicans, you will no doubt be aware that we have the five marks of mission. Uh, which are accepted around the globe in the, in the Anglican Church. For those of you who are not Anglican, I would suggest that every Christian denomination, every Christian church needs to adopt these. Uh, the question I have, however, is what would it look like if we actually took these seriously? Uh, they look great hanging on the wall, and a lot of churches have used them to create their, their long-term vision but what would it look like if we took it seriously? What would it look like if we actually saw our purpose as proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God, proclaiming the good news of a world which is marked by justice and peace for all of God's children? What would that look like? What would it look like if we understood the need to teach and baptize and nurture new believers, not simply to fill the pews, not simply to swell the ranks, not so that we can take in more money, but rather to understand that 2,000 years ago, Jesus created and embodied a movement. Jesus created a quiet, nonviolent revolution against the forces of violence and exploitation of injustice and oppression. What if we understood that our task was to teach and baptize new believers who would become part of a kingdom movement that understood its purpose being to transform the world to heal the world. Our institution has to become a movement again. What if we were to take seriously the notion that our, our mission is to respond to human need with loving service? Our mission is to become paracletes to one another. Our mission is to come alongside one another in times of distress and pain and suffering and to give courage and strength and help irregardless, irregardless of color of skin, irregardless of religion, irregardless of geography, we are called to respond to human need wherever we see it. What would that look like? What would it look like if all people, not just Christians, if all people around the world were to join hands together and say, we have had enough of injustice. We have had enough of unjust structures. We have had enough of violence. It's time to change. And we're gonna to stand together and work together to do that. What would it look like if we were all committed, all committed to working to preserve the integrity of the planet and to transform the face of the earth? What would it look like 
I don't know if I have the answer to that, but I do know that John had a vision for what that might look like. Listen to this. He says, I, I saw heaven and earth newly created, gone the first heaven, gone the first earth, gone the sea. I saw holy Jerusalem new created, descending resplendent out of heaven. I heard a voice thunder from the throne, look, look, God has moved into the neighborhood, making his home with men and women. They're his people. He's their God. And listen to this. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death is gone for good. Tears are gone for good. Crying is gone. Pain is gone for the first order of things is gone. And John knew that there were doubters. So he said, look, I'm making everything new and write it all down because every word is dependable and true. People, I believe, I believe that we have a window of opportunity to transform the world. I believe we have a window of opportunity to create a new earth. I believe we have the possibility to bring healing to broken people, but, but that open window is not going to stay open forever. There is an urgency to it. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you, I'm going to ask you if you will commit yourself to being a people who will make a difference. And I'm going to ask you some questions. And, and, and the answer to the questions is, I will, with, with, with God's help. And my apologies to the Book of Alternative Services because I have my own way of asking these questions. And, and so, my brothers and sisters, will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship and the breaking of bread and in praying for all of God's children? My brothers and sisters, Whenever you sin, whenever you mess up, and you will, will you repent? Will you turn away from your foolish agendas? Will you turn away from destructive behavior and once again work to realize God's dream? My brothers and sisters, will you try to the best of your ability to proclaim the good news of God, the good news of a kingdom of justice and peace for all God's children, not simply by words, but by what you do and, and by, by who you are. Siblings in God, siblings in God, will you look for the face of Jesus in all people, even in the ones you don't like, and love your neighbor as yourself? My friends, will you work for justice and peace for all people? And will you respect the dignity, the dignity of every human being? Will you strive to maintain the integrity of our planet and do your part to renew the face of the earth? We are caught together. We are caught together in an unbreakable network of mutuality. Tied in a single robe of destiny. Holy Father, make them one. Holy Father, make them all one. Holy Father, make them totally one. Make them one in heart and in mind. For the love of God, I need you to say amen. For the love of our planet, I'm begging you to say amen. For our children and our children's children, for the world, let all God's children say, Amen.
And now we join together in saying, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us pray. Gracious God, you desire unity for your people in the world and unity between heaven and earth. We thank you for drawing us together as a community of faith united in your love, even in times when it is hard to gather. Equip us to witness to your promise of resurrection and new life as we serve you in the world. Hear us as we pray for your world. Lord, in your mercy. God, we worry about the way things are going. Daily life has been uprooted by the pandemic and also by war and environmental devastation. Send your spirit of healing and reconciliation to lead people to peace with justice. Heal the earth and bring hope for renewed relationships. Help us learn from this anxious time how you invite us to live in balance with each other and with your whole creation. Lord, in your mercy. God, we are concerned about all the divisions we see around us, many laid bare in responses to the pandemic. Communities and countries are stressed by suspicion and discrimination. People are judged severely by race and ethnic origin. Send your spirit of healing and reconciliation to open hearts filled with prejudice and ease the lives suffering its effects. Heal the hurt and bring hope for lasting unity. Lord, in your mercy. This Sunday, we pray for the work of healing and reconciliation in Canada between Indigenous peoples and those who have settled in this land. Send your spirit to guide our leaders and build trust and respect among us all. Heal the lives limited by misunderstanding and bring hope for just resolutions to problems of long standing. Increase the spirit of generosity as the nation begins to rebuild social structures damaged in the pandemic so that the needs of indigenous peoples will not be overlooked. Lord, in your mercy. God, we feel sadness for those whose lives are marked by isolation and fear, by grief or despair, effects deepened by the times of physical distancing. Send your spirit of healing and reconciliation to draw the lonely into friendships, and as society begins to reopen, create a true sense of belonging for each one. Heal any burden of grief and bring hope through your eternal friendship. Lord, in your mercy. God, we are hopeful for the church because it belongs to you. Send your spirit to guide our witness in the world. Teach us how to share our experience of your love and invite others to join the journey toward healing and reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy. And now, Joining our prayers and praises together. We pray in the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
And now the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love and pray for today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen.